Now to a story about water scarcity. Although Taiwan gets rainfall that's nearly three times the global average, most of that water quickly runs into the ocean. Researchers are taking a cue from colonial-era Japanese irrigation techniques to build and upgrade underground canals. One canal in Pingdong County is able to yield more clean water than some of the nation's biggest reservoirs. In our Sunday special report, we go below the surface of the earth to see a hidden water source that could be the answer to Taiwan's water shortage. It's the middle of March. We are at the upstream part of a river in Pingdong's Laiyi Township, and we find that the riverbed is dry. But just two meters below the surface is a surprising sight, a surging stream coursing out to the sea. This is Arfeng's number two water tower. They call it an inflow tower. Actually, it is an entryway that workers use to get down there. I'll go first. When you come down, you need to be especially careful. We follow him along the underground stream, getting a rare look at the weir of Erfeng Canal. This is Erfeng Canal. Water arrives here after filtering through Da Wu Shan and the riverbed above. It's top-notch water. It's the essence of water. Erfeng was built during the Japanese colonial period to irrigate sugarcane plantations. Today, it produces more water than Tainan's Baihe Reservoir. Under the river is Erfeng's main weir, a channel shaped like a triangle. The slanted surface of the weir faces the river, catching water through its slats. The slats are covered with a layer of woven vines for filtration. Altogether, the weir is 328 meters long. That's connected to a 455-meter culvert that carries the water to a farm and village downstream, using the power of gravity. The water seeps in through these cracks here. How much water comes through depends on the water level of the river overhead. During droughts, less water comes through. During the rainy season, the flow is bigger. The stream is longer and larger. Few can appreciate the Erfeng Canal more than the Paiwan people living in the nearby village. When the canal was completed in 1923, the Paiwan people moved from Dao Shan to the village to make use of the water source. Even in times of widespread drought, these villagers had a clean, reliable water source. We don't have to worry about running out of water because the underground stream has never dried up before. From north to south, Da Wushan is wet year-round. There is always water flowing down, so there will always be water in Erfeng Canal, coming down along the terrain and into the canal. Water finds its way from high elevation to low, and we just catch it at the bottom. At present, Pingdong needs roughly 250,000 liters of water daily for residents' use, and Erfeng alone is able to collect 200,000 liters of water per day. This capacity has made the Pingdong County government aware of the importance of underground water collection. Our current goal is to complete an underground stream survey. We want to see if there are ground conditions similar to Erfeng Canal near any of Pingdong's other rivers or drains. We want to promote the development of underground streams. We can hope they can become a source of water for the county in the future. Like Erfeng Canal, Zhu Liao Station in Kaohsiung's Dashu District was built during the Japanese colonial era to feed the local water system. Over the past several years, attention has increasingly focused on the potential of underground water supplies. In 2013, water resource authorities built a well using radial jet drilling. Drawing on subterranean streams, the well can produce some 100,000 cubic meters of water a day. 
Former Taiwan Water Corporation President Huang Jingshui has actively promoted underground water extraction after discovering that the quality of underground water is better than that of rivers. Underground water flows through a gravel layer. The water that flows through this layer is very clean. I'll give some information about turbidity to think about. After Typhoon Maranti in 2016, most of Kaohsiung and Pingdong's rivers had a turbidity level higher than 25,000 nephilometric turbidity units, whereas the reading we got here was only 7. Just now, we measured turbidity levels around 0 0.1, 0 0.2. The standard turbidity for drinking water is 2 units. But amid the push to build wells in subterranean streams, there are concerns that collecting underground water could cause sinkholes. It's not the public that worries about this. We academics have the same concerns. When we are digging a well, we dig test wells all around the site to observe changes in the water level so that we can avoid creating sinkholes. Normally, locations with more gravel layers are chosen for underwater streams. These are areas where sinking won't occur. Sinking usually happens in areas with smaller granules of clay. Water scarcity is a problem that will continue to plague Taiwan. Besides managing and reducing our consumption of water resources, the government and the people must work together to explore new sources of water.